What's going on guys? It's Paul here and I am just now about to get back to my car after a day hike. I've been hiking with the Daybreaker Day Pack from Six Moon Designs, which just so happens to be what I'm reviewing in this video today. So let's get back to the office and I'll dive into the review. All right, it is a couple of days later, but I'm back in the office. So let's jump right into the review of this pack. First off, this is a 34 liter frameless day pack from Six Moon Designs. And the primary material that this is constructed out of is a 210D Robic Nylon. In case you're not familiar with 210D, suffice it to say that this material is very thick, it's nice and rugged, you would have a pretty hard time puncturing a hole in this material. Uh, but lest you think that that material makes the bag heavy, this entire pack only weighs 20 ounces and if you remove some of the optional items that come with this pack, you can drop that weight all the way to 17 ounces, so just barely over a pound. The bag comes in three different colors, so they have a blue, an orange, and this black version. I like this one. It has a nice tactical look to it, but they do have the other colors if you'd prefer that. And as of the time of recording this video, the bag sells for $120. Next, let's go over the features of this pack, and I'll start on this side down here at the bottom. They have this hip belt. They call it a hip belt on the Six Moon website, but as you can see, this isn't padded, so you're not going to transfer any significant amount of weight to this belt. And I'm six foot one, and when I wear this pack, that belt clips right around the level of my belly button. So it's really more of just a stabilizing strap. I've never really been a big fan of these straps, so I typically remove them from my backpacks. But thankfully, Six Moon has thought of that and they've made this hip belt really easy to remove. The little clips on the side, all you have to do is press that in, it pops loose and you can slide it right out of the loop on that side. And then you can do the exact same thing on the other side, squeeze that down, it pops loose and it slides right out. Next is the shoulder straps. They're fairly wide padded straps. I would say these are about a quarter of an inch thick, roughly, uh, not super padded but plenty padded for the amount of weight that you'll be carrying in this type of backpack. On both shoulder straps it has these stretchy pockets for water bottles or snacks or my uh, iPhone 10R fits perfectly down in one of those pockets and they also have a little drawstring at the very top if you want to cinch that up to keep anything from sliding out of that pocket while you're hiking. And between the two shoulder straps, they have this adjustable sternum strap. It has a little elastic on the end there just to add some stretch, a little give to that strap. Moving up toward the top of the pack, there is this strap handle here, nothing really too special about that. And then inside the hood, there is a pocket. It has a zippered opening here, and this is a water resistant zipper. On the inside of that pocket, they have one of these little clips that's sewn to the inside of the pocket. I think they call these glove clips. I've never used it for gloves, but it does work well for a multi-tool or a Swiss Army knife. There is a good bit of space inside this pocket. I can say that it's the perfect size for a pack of large tortillas. Spinning the bag around, there are two stretchy side pockets that are fairly deep on both sides. Then there's another stretchy pocket on the very back here. And depending on how much stuff you have inside the backpack, typically the hood kind of covers over the top of that pocket. But before I move on to that, I will mention these little straps that clip the hood down. They are sewn into a daisy chain here. So if you have something you want to carabiner to the outside of the pack, there's a good space to do that on both sides. And then there are also two loops at the bottom for connecting all of your fancy accessories. So you can unclip the hood, open that up, and now you can see just how deep this pocket is. There's a, a decent amount of space there depending on how full the backpack is. And I do really like that they have reinforced the bottom of this pocket with that same 210D material. So if you're gonna be shoving, uh, say, tent poles or tent stakes down in the bottom of this pocket, you don't have to worry about those things poking a hole in the bottom of the pocket. Moving up to the top, I'll spin this back around and inside this collar or on this collar, 
there are slots on both sides. So if you are using this with a hydration bladder, you can run the hose out of one of those slots. And there's just a drawstring here that closes up that collar so I can open that up. Blanket not included with the backpack. Okay, I folded the collar back so that hopefully we can see a little better down inside the backpack. And I'll show you first here on the inside of the pack, there's something that my OCD self absolutely loves. I wish every backpack had this. And they have a tiny little zippered pocket on the inside with another one of those clips sewn inside here. And that's really just for your wallet and keys. So you can put those on the inside, zip that up, and you don't really have to open it at all the entire time you're on your trip. So no risk of losing your wallet and keys. Okay, I don't know how well you can see down to the bottom of the pack, but there's a nice bright orange material at the bottom of the backpack. So if there's something just loose in your bag, there's actually some contrast at the bottom so you can see what's in the bottom of the bag. I like that. Against the very back of the pack, there is this hydration bladder sleeve. So if you do use a hydration bladder, you can slide it directly into this sleeve. But if you don't use a bladder or if you just don't wanna use the sleeve, this does have little plastic clips. So this is the other item that you can easily unclip and remove from the pack. This sleeve weighs 1.3 ounces. So it's removing this and that hip belt that drops the pack to a total weight of 17 ounces. Now, like I said, this is a frameless pack. So instead of a frame, they have a thin foam pad against the back of this just to give the pack some structure. So if you want to, when you get to camp, there's some Velcro here and you can take that loose and you can pull the foam pad out, not super easily, but you can pull it out and have a little foam pad to sit on when you get to camp. So getting into my personal experience with this backpack, first of all, just kind of talking about the quality. As far as the stitching and the materials used, I can honestly say this is the best built backpack I have ever used. It is excellent quality. A plus in that category. Like I mentioned earlier, the material is very thick, so it's nice and rugged. I would expect this to last a very long time. The material is not waterproof, and it's of course not listed as being waterproof, but I was on a trip with this pack where I was hiking for about an hour in a pretty good downpour of rain, and I had all of my gear inside in a pack liner, so I knew that my gear was gonna be fine, but I was pretty surprised, even for as wet as the outside of the pack got, when I got to camp and pulled the pack liner out, everything on the inside was mostly dry. So I think in, you know, a little bit of rain, you would be perfectly fine even if you didn't have your gear in, say, a waterproof bag or a pack liner. I really like all of the pockets on this backpack because it's not so many that your stuff is spread out all over the place and you can't remember where you put anything. But it does have enough pockets that you're not having to cram everything inside the backpack. So those things that you want to be a little more easily accessible, you can keep those outside the pack. So I'm a big fan of that. And speaking of that, just the space of this pack. 34 liters is a pretty decent amount of space. In fact, I was able to use this on a three-day backpacking trip. Now it is a day pack, so it's not particularly targeted at multi-day trips, but I kind of wanted to test the bag's limits. So I was really impressed that it had plenty of space for all of my gear and food for three days and two nights. However, weight wise, the pack has a rated maximum carry load of 20 pounds and my total pack weight for that trip was 21 pounds. So I was just slightly over that maximum limit and I did a total of 28 miles on that trip. And I can say that the pack did okay at first, but those last couple of miles, just with that amount of weight on these straps, the straps were starting to get a little uncomfortable that last day. So I can't say that I would really recommend this for that much of a load, maybe closer to 18 pounds or so, and you'd be okay for that type of mileage. But otherwise, the day trips I've used this thing on where I had like 12, 13 pounds in the pack, perfectly comfortable. Now, of course it can't all be good because no piece of gear is 100% perfect. So let me fill this pack again and I'll show you the one issue that I've had with it. Okay, the one thing that I've been kind of disappointed by is actually these little pockets on the shoulder straps. I really thought that I was going to like these, but I was disappointed because most of the time whenever I'm backpacking, I'm using either a life water or a smart water bottle. So I was looking forward to carrying those on the shoulder straps, but these pockets are just barely 
too small. The smart water bottle, you have to really fight it to actually get this bottle inside the, the pocket there. And because it's kind of sewn into this strap, it just bulges the strap out and makes the strap uncomfortable. So you really can't carry one of those. Now the life water bottle is skinnier, so it will fit down inside the pocket. But the issue is that it's tall, so it sticks up far enough that whenever you turn your head, you're smacking your chin against the top of the water bottle. So really, this pocket is primarily used for smaller little 16, 17 ounce water bottles like this Dasani bottle. These types of water bottles are a perfect fit for these pockets. I've also used my Hydropack Ultra Flask 600 milliliter. It worked really well in one of these pockets, but just know that you'll have to use these smaller bottles if you want to keep a water bottle in the pockets on the shoulder straps. And really, this wouldn't be such a big issue if it wasn't for the fact that I have kind of a love-hate relationship with these side pockets. I like that they're plenty deep, so when you do put something like a water bottle in there, you don't have to worry about the water bottle coming out. But at least for me, I can just barely touch the water bottle in that pocket. So at least for me, I was not able to get my water bottles out of these side pockets while I had the pack on. I had to take the pack off. So just keep that in mind. Ultimately, what I would recommend is keep a small bottle in the shoulder strap pockets. And if you need to carry additional water, just have backups in the back pockets. So overall, aside from those shoulder strap pockets being a little smaller than what I would prefer, I have been really happy with this pack. And I think that $120 is actually a very good price for this quality of a pack. So I would recommend that you check it out if you're in the market for a day pack or even just an ultra light overnight pack. Check it out. I'll place a link in the description below. If you have any questions for me, you can leave those in the comments section. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.